Welcome to another episode of Municipal Focus. My name is Kevin Tarchi. I will be your host for the next 30 minutes. We like to use this particular program as a way to inform you about some of the things that uh, you can get for services. Um, I shouldn't say services, but things that are that you can find at Town Hall, that you can find in Whitman, Hanson, maybe Abington. Uh, again, things that are going on that if you need to find information, well, that's what this program is for, to better inform you. Today we have a fantastic guest. His name is uh, Tom McCarthy, and he is the Director of Veteran Services for both the town of Whitman and Abington. Tom? Thank you. Welcome, sir, to Municipal Focus. Uh, for folks who may or may not know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name's Tom McCarthy. I was uh, promoted from a veteran service officer to the director of veteran services uh, a year ago, January, uh, to take over from my predecessor. And it's been, it was a challenge to make that move, but I've uh, met the challenges, and I'm always excited to come to work every day and see what I can do to make the lives of veterans and their families uh, better and more sustainable in a lot of cases. Um, I hired um, an assistant that is generally working out of the Abington office. She comes to the Whitman office. Our first veteran service, uh, female veteran service officer for either town, Abington or Whitman, which we represent as a district. Um, she's been brought up to speed. She's passed all her certification uh, credential courses and She's doing a fantastic job. Her name is Jackie Figgins. She's a uh, local from Whitman here. She grew up here in Whitman, went to Whitman Hanson Regional High School, and then joined the Marine Corps. Wow. Uh, to, to have a, uh, a female Marine veteran in the office to work alongside me as a uh, retired Marine myself, we just get along great. Uh, and she's doing a fantastic job. I'm so grateful to have her to serve our veterans in both communities with me. Semper Fi, sir. Thank you very much for oh, thank you. your service and, and for Jackie's service uh, to uh, our country. Uh, the conversation that we're going to have here today uh, is that not only to get just to, to remind you what the Veteran Service Office uh, at the Whitman or Abington Town Hall is for, uh, some of the things that are offered, that the help that you can receive. Also talk about a couple of upcoming things. Uh, we've got Memorial Day right around the corner. And talk to you about some changes that are going to happen regarding the uh, festivities. Uh, usually we have a nice parade here through the center of Whitman. We'll talk about that. And we're going to talk a little bit about the wall that heals. It's actually coming to uh, the South Shore this July. We're going to talk about that wall and much more. Let's start out by talking a little bit about what, what are some of the things that uh, you offer for services to veterans in need in this district? Well, we're very grateful to be here in Massachusetts where Massachusetts offers the best services in the country, the most broad range services in the country to our, our veterans when they come home and throughout the rest of their life after their service to our country. We have a, uh, a program that's called Chapter 115 uh, which um, helps veterans and their families and their children with uh, financial needs when they fall into that category. I also help folks uh, file um, Social Security when uh, veterans and their families file for Social Security, either disability or retirement. I uh, file VA claims for VA disabilities for the veteran themselves, uh, which would give them a broad range of services through the Veterans Administration uh, healthcare system. Um, and we're lucky in this part of the country to have the VA healthcare system that we do because all our doctors are drawn from all the teaching facilities in Boston. So in Massachusetts, veterans um, health care, I believe personally by using it and by conversations with other veterans is second to none mm. because of where we draw our health care from. We have a lot of residents that do their residency programs through the VA and their specialty residency programs through the VA. So we, get, we really do get the best of the best. We're very lucky uh, in comparison to all the news stories we've heard over the years about uh, terrible things going on in veterans' hospitals. We're very, very lucky in this part of the country um, that we have the best. And Massachusetts supporting us with the Chapter 115 Veterans Services 
uh, where there is a veteran service officer assigned to every single city and town, either individually through the town or as a district grouping with another town, uh, some as many as four towns are grouped together. But we're very, very lucky here in Massachusetts, and I feel honored to be able to serve these veterans that come and ask us for assistance. Sometimes it's a simple question they want answered that sets them at ease. And sometimes it can be very detailed and uh, time consuming to solve their issues. But we're always open, Jack and I are always happy to uh, serve any veteran that wants to come in and ask a question, stop by, say hello. Um, and we're, we're both very honored to be in the positions that we are. Uh, very grateful to the two towns supporting us through the town governments. Um, we get great support. Um, our town administrator here in Whit Whitman, Frank Lynham, is a veteran himself, right. um, which gives him more of an understanding of where we come from. Mm -hmm. And he also has a son that's a disabled veteran from the Iraq War who served in the United States Marine Corps as well and ended up medically retired. Um, so uh, this, uh, we, we get a lot of support from both the towns. Okay. H how do the two towns differ in regards to some of the uh, some of the things that you have to give are are the needs similar to veterans who come in and seek assistance? Uh, yeah, they they are. They're quite similar in uh, both towns. Um, here on the South Shore, we have a lot of the same type needs. Uh, there's a, f a few less uh, clients that we have on our roles in Abington than we do in Whitman, um, but that's based, I think, on population of veterans too. But that Whitman is a very, very veteran-friendly town. Where, wherever we go as a veteran in this town, myself and other veterans, we're always thanked for our service. And it, it's humbling uh, when somebody does want to thank you for your service, not knowing what your military history was. But we've all served for the same cause. We've mm -hmm. all sworn the same oath. We've all trained up to do whatever was asked of us. We signed a blank check to this country, and we're, we're grateful when people say thank you to us. Um, and you know, we have a great, great community as far as veteran support in this community. How interesting is it to have two communities to serve as opposed to, I think there was a time when Whitman, who had, it was a standalone uh, veteran services office where now it's kind of expanded out to two communities. Right. Well, they say um, the, the um, the policy for having a veteran service officer in a community is based on population. 12,000 and over, you have a full-time uh, veteran service officer. Mm. Under that 12,000 uh, uh, person population mark, you have a uh, part -time, you can do a part-time veteran service officer. Combining the two communities, we have a full-time, which is my position, and then Jackie's position, which is a part-time right. position. Uh, when we combine the two communities, it comes out to one full-time, one part-time. If we we're individuals, if we didn't go district, we would have stayed with a full-time in each community. Uh, we both work a lot more hours than uh, we have on the books, but um, it's because of our love and passion for serving veterans. Um, Jackie has the same passion and uh, uh, concerns that I do when a veteran comes in. We, uh, we really want to be there to help. Uh, and personally, I think this is the best position I've ever held in my life. I don't consider it a job, I consider it a passion. Uh, I love what I do, I love serving our community, uh, our veterans community, and uh, I get a lot of calls from people who are non-veterans for advice about family members who are veterans who um, are in crisis, and uh, we give them direction um, to the proper treatment programs that are available to them just for being an honorably discharged veteran. That's awesome. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that, you know, we have coming up, and to kind of segue away from what your office does to involvement with other things, Got Memorial Day coming up. We do. Um, Whitman has uh, always been a great town t for a parade. Uh, we have great streets. We have a lot of great participation. This year we're making some changes. It, uh, we have a parade committee that meets uh, for months prior to each parade, mm -hmm. um, each year for our Memorial Day parade. And this year we've um, it was voted through the uh, committee to make some changes because we seem to lose some people over the length of the parade. Um, so what we're going to do on Memorial Day, 
Um, we always start out, the veterans organizations and myself, we always start out at 7 o'clock in the morning prior to the parade, and a lot of people don't realize that, that all these folks get together. There's about 40 of us that get together, and uh, we start out uh, at 7 o'clock. We meet at um, the High Street Cemetery for a ceremony at 7, 10 a.m., where we do a wreath dedication, and we do um, a firing squad, a 21-gun salute. Uh, we know it's early. The people in the neighborhood have been getting used to it over the years because it's a common thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an everyday thing, so some do get startled that early in the morning with the 21-gun salute. And we apologize for that, but we do have to pay respects to our, uh, our war dead. Amen. Um, so uh, after we leave um, the High Street Cemetery, um, the Knights of Columbus invites us every year right after the High Street ceremony at that small cemetery on the top of the hill. Uh, on High Street. Then we go to the Knights of Columbus and we have a, um, a quick breakfast because we have to keep moving on so we're ready for the parade. We do that at 725. We have a little something to eat. Then we meet out in front of the Knights of Columbus right on Route 18 on the Abington Whitman line. Um, and we do a ceremony in front of their flagpole with a dedication, uh, a wreath dedication. And then we move on from there to the World War I Memorial this year. Um, this is new. The World War I Memorial Arch uh, by the fire station, uh, we normally in the past have done that as part of the parade. We would stop there and do a ceremony. This year we're going to, uh, we're not, the parade route has changed, so we're not going by the Memorial Arch. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that uh, ceremony there at 7.40 a.m. with a dedication, a uh, uh, wreath laying, and we'll do a 20, uh, 21-gun salute there as well, uh, followed by taps. Um, and then we're going to move on to the St. James Cemetery at 755. We will be in place to do a ceremony there. We will have a prayer and a dedication wreath service as well at uh, St. James. From St. James, we move to the Mount Zion Cemetery right up here on Washington Street. Um, we do a prayer and a dedication. We won't do a firing squad there. We, we're not doing a firing squad at St. James as well. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to um, the VFW Circle, which is the Rotary on Route 58 uh, on Plymouth Street and Essex Street, where they meet. Uh, 825, we do a uh, wreath service, and a prayer, and no firing squad there. Then we'll move on to the Colbrook Cemetery, which is our main cemetery right across from the police station. And we have a couple of things that we do there. We start out at 8.40 at the veterans lot with a decorating, um, decorating service with a wreath. We pay respects to our Medal of Honor recipient, uh, our only Medal of Honor recipient from the town of Whitman, Lieutenant John R. Fox, who was awarded his, um, his Medal of Honor due to his actions in World War II in a small town in France where he ordered all his unit out of the town and called in airstrikes on the town to save it, and it gave the uh, it gave the uh, the Allied forces some time to stave off the uh, incoming German troops. gave the uh, the U.S. and um, Allied troops time to form to defend this uh, location. There's a memorial there that's celebrated every single year in France. That uh, they're just so grateful that uh, Lieutenant Fox did what he did to save their community and uh, give the Allied forces time to regroup and stave off the, uh, the incoming forces. We do a firing squad there as well uh, with taps. We, then we move on to the Civil War lot uh, where we hold a prayer, um, a prayer service, a dedication wreath, uh, along with uh, we have the Civil War uh, Veterans Memorial there, uh, the lot. Uh, then we have the American Legion lot, um, as well, we cover the two in one little ceremony where we do a decorating service with a wreath on both, a firing squad and taps. And from there, we're going to fall out and go on to line up for the parade, mm. uh, which we start lining up at 9 a.m. and it's at our usual spot at the corners of um, uh, South Avon Court Street. We'll form on Court Street and we'll move uh, heading east, uh, west onto, onto South Ave. That, the parade kicks off at 9.30 a.m. 
We encourage everybody to come out and support us. We really appreciate the support, and Whitman's always been great with that. We get a great crowd. We'll move to the town hall where we'll hold our services. Um, and then we're going to make a, a right under Washington Street after we leave town hall. Um, we're, at town hall, we're also going to do our uh, wreath dedication. There's a memorial in front of the town hall mm -hmm. with a firing squad and taps. We move on from there onto Washington Street, uh, make a right off of South Ave onto Washington Street to Park Street, and then we'll go right into the cemetery. We're not moving all the way up to the Colburg Cemetery. This is the second change. The first change is making the right onto Washington right. instead of going up by the fire station and making a right onto Silver. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to make a right onto Washington Street, a right onto Park Street, and right into the park where the um, we have the. Um, Flag. The Civil War Memorial, yep, and we also have the um, the All Wars Memorial, where we'll do a dedication, a couple of wreath layings, a firing squad, and taps there as well, and then the parade the parade will disband from there, and we'll follow that up with a coalition uh, for all the uh, troops that have uh, been in the parade over at the American Legion, who is the sponsor of the parade this year. Sponsorship moves from organization to organization each year. In Whitman, it's between the VFW and the American Legion, and this year it's the American Legion's year to host. Um, so at the Civil War Memorial, um, the Veterans Memorial is at 1030. We have a hymn, a prayer. We have a speaker to make some remarks, the firing squad, taps with an echo, and fallout. Um, and then later on this year, we have a big event coming. After uh, this is coming in July, we have the Wall That Heals. What is that? The Wall That Heals is a large scale version of the Vietnam traveling wall mm -hmm. that uh, is transported by a 53 foot trailer that travels all around the country. It makes 63 stops annually Goodness. within the country. It's already on the road. It left from California about a month ago, uh, Southern California, making its way up the West Coast, heading north. And then it's going to start coming across the country. And we're, we're lucky enough to have been chosen this year um, through a lot of hard work and dedication through the Braintree Weymouth Eagles. Their veterans uh, organization through their, uh, through their unit has uh, put together quite a bit of this. And I'm, I was approached because I'm the director of the Abington and Whitman Veterans Services and the three towns that touch the base have been highly involved in this. Um, uh, Vinnie Fontaine from Rockland, he's the veterans agent over there, and George Ponce from Weymouth, um, and uh, about 20 other very, very dedicated people to put this whole project together. Huge undertaking. We've been working on it for months now, and we still have a couple months to go before we get it. It's going to be coming in on July 25th. It should arrive somewhere. Uh, right now we're anticipating about 11 o'clock, but we're going to get some updates on that. Okay. And it'll come in to the base, the old Naval base, which is uh, Union Point now. It's no longer Na Weymouth Naval Air Station. It's Southfield. It's no longer any of those. It's not Southfield yeah. either. It's yep. now uh, managed by Union Point. Yep. Uh, who have been great to work with. Uh, they are unbelievable. They really have bent over backwards for us. So we're going to come in through, um, right now we're planning on coming in through the Rockland side off of VFW over in Rockland, VFW Parkway. We'll come in through the, uh, the new uh, Delahunt uh, Drive uh, entrance. We'll come into the base there. And we're hoping to get as many veterans, veterans' families, supporters of veterans to come out and line that road about 11 o'clock in the morning uh, with an American flag and welcome the wall that heals in its very highly decorated trailer uh, to enter the base. It's going to be escorted by a large group of uh, veterans motorcycle units, uh, the Legion Riders, the Rolling Thunder, uh, and a number of others, the American Infidels. Uh, they sound scary when you say American <laughs> Infidels, but they are Highly organized group. Uh, they're now nationwide. They do a lot of uh, fundraising and support for veterans in need. Uh, they do a lot of fundraising throughout the year. So we're very happy to have all these groups participate. And no, not one of us could do it ourselves. We have a lot of corporate sponsorship. All of our unions from the Boston trades, various trades have been on board. 
uh, with uh, donations. Uh, some local businesses around uh, all three towns have been uh, on board. Um, uh, along with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts has been on board. We, we just have a, a large support system. So it's going to come in on the 25th. It should arrive around 11 a.m. Uh, it's going to be, it, right now, the plan is to have it leave from Gillette Stadium and come through all the cities and towns on the way over to Rockland to give it some exposure with the escort of the uh, state police. We'll have sheriff's departments, local police escorting and shutting down roads for us to come through with 500 motorcycles estimated right now out in front of it. It should be a great, uh, uh, a great presentation coming through uh, all the cities and towns. We're very excited about it. It'll be open 24 hours a day while it's here. Um, late on the 25th, uh, probably uh, we're estimating five to six o'clock will be the opening of it on the 25th uh, uh, p.m. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be there until the 29th, uh, late afternoon on Sunday, the 29th of July, yep. uh, where it will be uh, taken down at that point. There's going to be various ceremonies throughout the time that it's here on the 26th, where we will have a grand uh, ceremony with all our uh, state and federal politicians that want to attend. The Secretary of Veterans Services, Francisco Urena, um, who is in direct support of the work that I do as a VSO, um, uh, will all be attending. Um, and then it'll be open uh, throughout the night. We're going to have the Marine Corps League doing security overnight. If anybody has any questions or needs any help, they will be available uh, to assist people to view the wall. And one of the big things about this wall that's different from all the other Vietnam uh, wall ceremonies that have been held around the state in the past, this wall was, uh, is brand new this year going out. It's been upgraded. You can etch from it. You can highlight a name from the wall because it, the wall has been engraved. Um, there'll be uh, assistance there to help folks find out if, if they're looking for a particular veteran who lost his life in Vietnam to go to the exact right panel. Um, we will have assistance for people that have mobility issues. Um, we will have lighting in the parking lot. We're bringing in a couple of lighted generators. We will have a generator to support lighting over the length of the wall. The wall's 325 feet long. Wow. And it's gonna be um, in a grassy area between a tarmac and the runway. Uh, the, the runway, if anybody knows the base, the runway that runs from north to south, uh, it'll be run adjacent to that. Uh, very impressive. I've gone on to their website a couple of times to um, to view other locations, uh, but the difference is this year the wall you can highlight a name from it. Just the, the same exact way you can do in Washington D.C. It's breathtaking to see the uh, emotion and support. Uh, um, of folks when they they come out and see this wall it, it it can be life changing for some people and our reason for keeping it open all night long is to give people some quiet time to go and visit sure. we have a lot of veterans with um, PTSD issues uh, uh, or family members who have lost somebody whose name is on that wall to give them some quiet time um, to be able to view it if they don't feel they can come in the uh, well July the heat of the day for one sure. and for two uh, for that bit of privacy that they need uh, and we we understand that and we're welcoming that uh, so we we are hoping to uh, set a record with this uh, this wall's visit here um, nobody's broken ten thousand uh, we're looking to do that we have a lot of uh, our, our media, uh, whether it be print or radio or television, um, they're all going to be covering it to give us a lot of exposure prior to the wall arriving and during the events at the wall. I find it interesting that the, the, the wall that heals, is this, it actually honors more than the three million Americans uh, who actually served in the armed forces. Right. And not only has what uh, around, around fifty-eight thousand of the a, Vietnam, uh, yeah, Vietnam, a little uh, over fifty-eight thousand yeah, uh, men and women who actually made the ultimate sacrifice. Right, who gave their How life for our that? freedom. I'm very moved by that. Um, uh, you know, uh, I was in my uh, mid-teens when the Vietnam War was go uh, war was going on, and I was so disheartened by uh, 
the way our veterans were being treated coming home. Yep. Uh, they were all accused of doing uh, some terrible things. Uh, not every one of them did that. Uh, or, uh, I, I believe in my heart, none of them did anything outside of uh, regulations. Um, you know, the, uh, war is war. War is ugly. It's terrible. Nobody wants to be in war. And these folks, majority of the names on this wall were people who were drafted out of their normal civilian life right. and forced to sign the dotted line, uh, where today we have an all-volunteer military. Um, you know, it, it was very, it, to see all the news, uh, the, the video coverage on a daily basis on the evening news, while well, we were back then when the family sat around the kitchen table and ate dinner together and watched the news it just, it hit me so hard, I had to join the military. So I joined in 1976, right after Vietnam, and uh, I was instructed and commanded by a lot of Vietnam veterans who were different people um, after they came home from the war. You could, you could see it in their eyes, you could see it, feel it in their emotion. Um, so I worked for some very highly decorated veterans uh, of the Vietnam era. Uh, my father was a Korean War veteran in the United oh, States Air Force. Uh, luckily, he was, uh, came home unscathed. He was stationed in Alaska and uh, was very lucky. He was defending the uh, communist uh, border up there uh, before Alaska was even a state of the United States. Um, but uh, you know, I have a long history of family members serving in the military. I'm a very proud veteran myself. Um, and I, I just think anything we can do to support any of our veterans from our past who fought for our freedoms that we're uh, able to enjoy every day. And a lot of people, we forget that on a daily basis. I hope that I never forget it. But uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to all of our veterans who have served for myself, for my family, my friends. Um, they, we wouldn't be the country we are today without our veterans. Amen. Uh, we got less than we got less than three minutes left. Mm -hmm. We've talked about an awful lot. Yeah. Man. If folks want to find out more, whether they want to find out about um, services that that are offered for veterans here in the community, whether they want more details about Memorial Day, or maybe they want might want to uh, sponsor this part of the uh, trip for the wall that sure, shows. Sure, sure. How can they uh, get in touch with you? Well, they can, anybody can reach me at any time. I'm, uh, we, we're, I'm in the Whitman office Monday through Thursday. I'm there nine to four. I anticipate expanding my hours on Tuesdays to 7 p.m. now that we have uh, Jackie on board, which Excellent. gives me that ability. Jackie's in the Abington office on Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays. Friday, the Abington Town Hall is open a half a day. Mm. She's available there. But anytime you need either one of us, night or day, leave us a message. My number at the office is 781-618-9750. Please call if you have a simple question or if you have an urgent need that you think we might be able to help you with. Don't guess about it. Give us a call and we'll let you know and we'd be eager to help you. Um, anytime, give us a call or swing by the office. In Whitman, the Veteran Service Office is at the basement level. Uh, if you come in this side, uh, handicap access, I'm uh, in the second door on the left. Yep. And in the Whitman Town Hall, uh, the office is on the second floor and there is an elevator so people with mobility issues, you can access our office. But anytime at all you have any questions about any of the events going on or uh, if you need assistance or have a simple question, please don't hesitate. Give us a call. We're there to help you, and we want to help you. Excellent segment. Well, thank you thank very you much. You know, thank you for we, the invitation. We're going to find a way to get you in front of the camera, you and Jackie, somehow, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'd so, be looking forward to that, and Jackie would be excited to do it, too. Excellent. I'm sure. And we thank you at home for tuning in for programs like this, like Municipal Focus. If there's a particular conversation that you want to have heard on the show, drop us an email at, actually, info at whca.tv. Again, info at whca.tv uh, for Mr. Tom McCarthy and the fine folks behind the glass producing this program. I'm Kevin Tachi. Have a great day.